Hi, my name is Jim Gibson. Thank you for coming to my channel today. Really appreciate it. Today I want to talk to you about the cloud. Uh, a lot of people are confused about the cloud. A lot of people don't trust it, which is unbelievable that you don't today because the technology is there. The technology is fantastic. It is the base technology today for businesses. Uh, most large businesses are in the cloud, either partly or fully in the cloud. And, uh, you know, it's so much so that Microsoft no longer supports some of the certifications. Microsoft Systems Engineer, those type of uh, certifications are no longer supported by Microsoft. They said if you want to progress in Microsoft, then you have to learn their cloud, uh, the Microsoft cloud. Uh, so those certifications have been retired. They're not even doing updates to them or upgrades or, or retesting as of June 2022, those certifications, the MCSEs and some of the others, no longer exist in the Microsoft system. Everything now is a Microsoft cloud. So Microsoft isn't going to push their, um, their vendors and things like that to the cloud unless they are positive this is the best way to go. And it really is the best way to go. Now, I'm an AWS guy. I love Amazon Web Services. There's a lot of big corporations that use Amazon Web Services. I'm thinking about Netflix. How many times you use Netflix? Do you ever see buffering? Rarely. I mean, it could happen, but I've never seen it. But the nice thing about it is there's a lot of applications out there to support companies like Netflix. Also, companies like uh, that you may be familiar with some of the big, uh, you know, the 500 uh, companies. Um, uh, and lastly, you know, the government uh, uses uh, AWS, uh, uh, the NSA, the CIA, uh, the Defense Department all use Amazon Web Services. And <laughs> NSA actually puts top secret information. They all do. They put top secret information into uh, Amazon Web Services. That's how much trust they have uh, in Amazon Web Services and in the cloud, more importantly. Uh, so I want to talk about some things that advantages there are to your business, no matter what size you are, especially if you're small. You know, you, you got to do that big investment and, and get that server that sits in a room and just hums away, takes up power 24-7. You got to air condition it. You got to have special people who know what they're doing to service that, that uh, server. And if it dies, if you did your backup, then you have to turn around and you have to buy a new one. Uh, you have to put the software in it. You have to program that system. We're talking about weeks and they'll say you have the hardware, okay? And uh, you just need to put the software in. You're still talking about, uh, you know, hours uh, that your employees have to sit around and wait until you're back up online. So that should be one of the biggest arguments uh, for the cloud. It does not go down. Well, I think they have a, what, seven nines thing, which means 99.9999 out to seven nines of reliability. So nothing's perfect made by man. Uh, but in this case, it is about as perfect as you could get when it comes to networks. So let's talk about it. Uh, one of the things uh, that one of the advantages uh, about um, the web, uh, I'm sorry, about the cloud uh, with Amazon Web Services, and it applies to the other uh, web services that are out there, uh, but Amazon Web Services, one of the one of the advantage of using the cloud is that uh, you need to stop guessing. You can stop guessing capacity. You know, when you go to an IT guy and you're the boss, you're the CEO, let's say, and you go to that um, that IT guy and you say, I need a server. Let's say this is the old way of doing it. OK, I need a server. And then he's going to ask you some questions and he's going to say, boss. What are you going to put in that server? And you're going to say, well, I'm going to put in this application. Well, how many people are going to access it? Well, you know, X amount of people are going to access it. How big is the application? How big is that database? What do we need to do? How big is that bandwidth need to be from that server to your local ISP? And, you know, all these questions are going to be asked. Now, if he's a good IT guy, he's going to say, well, I need X amount of server, a certain size. I'm pretty sure I'm guessing that, you know, that this is what you're probably going to need. And then he's going to add extra <laughs> just to be on the safe side. Because you know something? 
Uh, if you sell online, let's say you're going to have Black Friday, and that's, that's going to be way up there uh, on Black Friday of uh, you know, what you need uh, in capacity on your server. Uh, but in this case, he's just going to match the maximum amount of capacity you could possibly need in that server, then they're going to add extra to it. So he's going to guess. So the nice thing about the, the cloud is that you don't have to guess. You go to the cloud, you can spin up a server, and I say spin up a server because I can spin up a server within two or three minutes. So I can take a major um, uh, server uh, application, either uh, Microsoft or Linux, and I could spin that up in a few minutes, and that could be fully functional and ready to use, ready to upload, ready to program, ready to put your application uh, there within a few minutes. I don't have to guess capacity. Um, what I can do is build in the, the, the capacity issues. So the system itself, I could tell the system itself that when you need more capacity, it will provide it. If you need more uh, compute power, it can provide it. If you need more memory, it can provide it. So you're exchanging, <laughs> uh, guessing <laughs> for uh, actually what you need and it can expand and it can shrink so it's elastic. So that's one of the things, the advantages you have in the cloud that you do not have when you're putting a server on premise. So you have that, that, uh, that uh, expandability, uh, that, uh, that modifications that can take place. And of course, you're only charged for what you use, not what you have. So you can set all this up and if you don't use it, you're not charged for it. Uh, so if you start using it, you're only, only charged for you know, its use. And so you don't have to guess capacity. You don't have to buy extra. You know, it's sort of like electricity. Um, you, you know, do you have your own generator out the back door? That, that powers, constantly powers your, your building? No, I don't think so. What you do is you just pay for uh, the, the power that you use. And that's the same thing with the cloud. You just pay for what you use. Now, uh, next, so we're, we're going to be changing um, capital expenditures for operation expenditures. You know, when you go out and you buy some servers, sometimes I hear people buy multiple servers and then they buy... Uh, backup servers and things like that, that gets really pricey. And that's the old way of doing things. So we don't do it that way anymore uh, in IT, or you shouldn't be doing it that way anymore in IT. So that's all, that's all capital expenditures. You have to buy those things, and you have to take them to your um, you know, CPA, and they have to be uh, taken care of properly in the tax code. And I am not a CPA, and I am not a tax... A uh, person that can tell you what the advantages, disadvantages are there. But I know one thing, you have to come up front with a lot of bucks. And then you have to have a person who's trained, who has to come in there and put the software in there. Has to set it up, has to test it, has to work through to make sure it's working exactly the way you want it. So it's a big, uh, you know, a capital expense. But... When you go to the cloud, now it becomes an OPEX, uh, an operational expense. So you're only paying for what you use. So, um, you know, uh, 10 o'clock at night, uh, your uh, customers are not uh, accessing your database. You're not charged uh, for anything. You have maybe one little server that's up and running, ready to take the next order. But if you have 100 people uh, instantly want to order a widget, <laughs> then... Uh, the capacity is increased to match uh, to match the uh, volume of traffic into your system. So you exchange uh, capacity uh, expenditures for operational expenditures. There's a big advantage there. You don't have to put out a lot of money up front. Um, and so because of this, because someone like Amazon Web Services and Azure is the same thing, they have these data uh, centers all over the world that are all connected through high-speed internet. A super high-speed internet and because of that and because of all the servers they have and you're only paying for processing uh, that's it you're not paying to have it sit there and do nothing uh, you're not air conditioning it you're not doing the battery backup you're not doing backups if you put the system in correctly uh, you don't have to worry about all that stuff that's all handled by by either Azure or AWS and so therefore the result is that you pay lower, lower price uh, overall uh, 
because of the fact that AWS and Azure has all this equipment all over the place and you're only paying for what you use for that minute. That's it. Um, Increased speed and agility. I already talked about this a little bit already where, uh, you know, one of the things that I was telling you was that I can go in there and then people who work in the cloud, and there's a lot more these days, by the way, cloud is just expanding. This is the way to go. But people who work in that area can spin up a server within minutes. <laughs> you can spin up a server in your office within minutes. I guarantee you, unless it's already loaded with software, server software, and other type of applications. You already have the, uh, the network capacity. You already have the ISP capacity, things like that. So you don't have to worry about bandwidth or any of that stuff uh, uh, when you're in the cloud. That's all something that you can add or you can have added automatically as needed and, and also closed down as needed. So uh, you, you get an increase in speed of, of um, uh, of, of bringing a server up and you also have the agility that you can adjust. You can bring it up fast, you, you can adjust what exactly it does and how it does it, everything else, and it's fast. It's fast and it's reliable. Um, next, you can go global within minutes. So if you want your server somewhere else like in Europe or things like that, man, you can have it just like that. You can set up a server in Europe. And you know what else I like about it is? Um, when you set up a server, like I, I concentrate in the United States, so I set up servers in the United States all over the place, you know, East Coast, West Coast, some of the other places. Uh, when I set them up, I can sit there and look at disaster recovery. What happens if California falls into the ocean as a claim? Well, maybe that's almost not going to happen. Uh, but we do have earthquakes in California. How about Florida when you have those hurricanes? Well, if I am feeling insecure about my data being in Florida or California or somewhere else, I can duplicate that. And it's naturally actually duplicated by AWS. They, they duplicate it. But if I want to really be sure and get an extra copy, I can put it somewhere else like the middle of Arizona and, uh, and uh, have my database in Arizona. So if something happens, East Coast, West Coast falls into the ocean, I still have my database. If there's nuclear war, <laughs> I still have my database. I still have my applications and they are still up and running because I can put the, that database, that application anywhere in the world and I can put it close uh, to the customer. That's what uh, Netflix does. Um, they have a thing called content delivery network in uh, Amazon Web Services. And what it does is it copies the database and it puts it close to where the, the customers are. So when you're accessing it, you're not going halfway around the world to get that movie. You're going uh, short distances. So uh, speed and agility, global in minutes, that's what I meant to say. Global in minutes, that's where we're at right now. So uh, the next thing is, and the last thing is, well, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot more, but the last thing I want to talk about today is focus on business. It gives you the ability that you don't have to become an IT expert today or you don't have to you know interview IT experts or you don't have to interview companies ISPs or ISSPs uh, when it comes to uh, uh, your company you don't have to be do all those things you know uh, one point I had I think uh, 10 15 trucks and I remember thinking to myself you know these are regular Toyota Ford trucks that we would drive technicians would drive to places and all when you actually had to do things like that you still do if you're doing cabling, but um, most part you don't have to drive all over the place and send technicians to different places. But when I had that, I remember saying, man, I need to replace tires on truck number 10 and I need to um, uh, pay my gas bill of $3,000, $4,000. That was inexpensive back then. It's a lot more today, I'm sure. Um, or, you know, I, I need to do registration here, or I need a, uh, a ladder rack replaced on this one. I became, I became an expert in plumbing for my building. I became, uh, you know, a person that had to manage my trucks and my, and uh, rather than my business, rather than the sales staff, rather than making sure that we are selling. So next month we have work that we can actually get paid to do because, you know, as a contractor, and I'm, I was a low voltage contractor, or still am actually, low voltage contractor, IT contractor, so I always had to have jobs lined up. 
Um, and, but the bottom line is I would spend a lot of time on the, the stuff that really didn't uh, affect so much my profit margin. How's that? Uh, because I had to pay attention to the, the, my tires. I, I had to make sure that, that uh, I had insurance. I had to, but when you deal with your servers, you don't want to become an IT expert. <laughs> You just want to run your business. You want to focus on your business. Um, now, there are so many other things that I could talk about when it comes to the cloud, how, uh, how nice it is that all this stuff is not in your office uh, because you're going to save on electricity and cooling. And you don't need to be too concerned if someone comes in and steals your, all your computers and all. You just go get new computers and your database is still there. <coughs> Excuse me. You don't need to worry about backups uh, if it's programmed right now. The cloud needs to be programmed right. So if you're going to the cloud, you really, you know, you need an expert to originally set it up and maintain it. But that person doesn't, should not become an employee if you're a small company. They should become a service to you and be able to add people, uh, access uh, to the internet, things like that, access to uh, the cloud, things like that. But there's so many other things that are involved. Uh, security is much better. You have. Um, you know, people who are experienced in security systems that are ex that that watch out for you uh, on the internet. So the internet is more secure, more secure um, than if you uh, have your database at your office. And uh, and uh, I'll tell you the reason why. Some people say, "Well, how can you prove that?" Well, just one way. I'm just going to show you one way. Okay, one way is uh, people a lot of times will take their their backups and they will take it home. And there was a uh, doctor who would back up all the time into a laptop. And uh, he took that laptop and he'd take it in his car. And I remember one, or the story was one Friday night, uh, he was driving home. He decided to stop for dinner. When he stopped for dinner, uh, ate dinner, came out to his beautiful car and his window was broken and his laptop was gone. And guess what? It was HIPAA, a violation. And he ended up with a really really big fine, like above a million dollars for that HIPAA violation. You can look up all these violations of HIPAA on the line uh, on the internet, so it'd be interesting if you're in the medical field to know these things. But if all your data is in the cloud uh, and you put it in there properly and, and you've uh, secured it uh, with algorithms, um, um, uh, crypt, uh, cryptography and stuff like that, um, no one's going to break into your system. And if they break into your system, they can't read your data anyway. And if they corrupt your data, you still have backups. You still have long-term backups, short-term backups. Everything's done automatically. So you don't have to think, oh, uh, I'm leaving today at 4. I better take my, my, uh, my disk, my backup disk home. I, I've seen that where people take their disk back, you know, backup disk home. And then what they do is they leave it at home for a week. And then they lose their computer and they have to get another computer. They have to get the software in there. And then the, the data is a week old. So you lost a week's worth of work. So anyway, we could talk for a long time on cloud and why you need to move to it. Most uh, businesses are moving to it. It seems like to me the bigger they are, the, the more they move towards the cloud. There's such an advantage, though, if you're small, uh, not to be able to do that. Uh, capital expenditure, things like that, and be able to grow without saying, well, I need another computer. Oh, I need this. I need that. You just go right in the, into the uh, software and you just add what you need and you only pay. Even if you add it, you only pay when you use it. Again, my name is Jim Gibson. Thank you for coming to my channel today. I'd love to talk on this subject uh, for hours, but you wouldn't listen anyway. So thank you for joining um, the conversation here, and there's a lot more uh, when it comes to the cloud. You have a great day. Bye.